Hello, it's me, Daryl, uh, Florida Catholic guy, uh, doing something a little different today. I uh, got my iPad set up uh, outside on my grill, and I'm going to do a little uh, talk show thing. As you see, I got my Tampa Bay Rays hat on, and uh, the theme about this one is going to be baseball. And uh, a couple of uh, sites I've been following. Um, well, let's say they're talking about whether the season's going to resume and uh, what the deal with the players and owners are. Just to give a little uh, update on conditions up here, it's uh, down here, I should say, in Florida. It's around 90 degrees and humid, and the sun's out, and it's great. <laughs> a lot of people don't like it, but I do. Anyway, back to baseball. As most sports fans probably know, uh, there have been talks to resume baseball without fans. The uh, major sticking point has been uh, between the players and owners not wanting uh, players not accepting uh, the proposals that include salary cuts and uh, I know this has been somewhat of a controversial subject I know uh, a couple sites uh, sites that I follow, people on Twitter, uh, who I have a great deal of respect for, and in fact I'll give them shout outs. Uh, bear with me here. Uh, well, one of them is uh, Gabrielle and uh, She's at GF ST as in Thomas A double R one. That's at that's on Twitter, and uh, she's the uh, founder of uh, Twitter site Girl at the Game, which is at Girl at the Game on Twitter, and uh, there's uh, a couple other people. Uh, that I'd like to give shout outs to. Uh, like I said, bear with me a, bit, a minute here. Uh, another one, Sydney. Uh, I want to say she. Uh, Sydney is the co-founder of a site call, called All About That Base, and it's uh, at All About That Base on Twitter. Uh, she's someone I highly respect and admire. And uh, I haven't been following this long, but uh, there's a... Uh, sidelines and play-by-play -play for the Baltimore Orioles, also MLB data, ESPN, uh, Melanie Newman, which is at Melanie with an IE, Lynn, L-Y-N-N-E, N as in November, so that's at Melanie Lynn N on Twitter, and uh, I haven't been following her that long, but uh, shout out to her for a happy birthday today if she sees us. Doubt she will, maybe. Who knows? Um, there is one more person. Uh, just want to make sure I give proper shout outs to uh, everybody. Oh, 
Oh yes, another person who's a MLB player agent is uh, Rachel Luba, uh, at Agent Rachel Luba, and that's uh, Agent R-A-C-H-E-L-L-U-B-A, -L -L and that's at Agent Rachel Luba, Twitter again, and she's a attorney, a boxer, and a former UCLA gymnast, and a current MLB player agent. So, uh, I haven't been following her that long, but uh, I wanted to give her a shout out because uh, I do, uh, I do like, uh, I do support uh, women uh, sports pages, uh, sites, uh, for women uh, in sports in this world. Couple is driving me crazy. There is one more person here that I'm trying to find because she is somebody that, again, I, I guess you could say admire. Uh, I'm just trying to find her uh, Twitter handle here. And, uh, anyway, I should have figured this out before I came out here. Just to, uh, give, uh, Part of what I'm going to be talking about, uh, Chelsea Ladd, who I didn't mention, but I will, is at Chelsea, C-H-E-L-S-E-A, Brooke, B-R-O-O-K-E, that's at Chelsea Brooke, uh, she's another, uh, let's see, she, uh, Founder of at Dugout Dish, just like it sounds, Dugout Dish. Sports journalist, co host of Region One Sports. It's at Region One Sports. Uh, and I highly recommend following her. And this is what she had to say. I don't know who needs to hear this, but minor league baseball players deserve a lot more than what they are currently getting. And uh, once I find the uh, person I'm looking for to give the final shout out to, I will get into, oh yes, here it is. Uh, final person that I definitely wanted to give a shout out to who I admire is uh, Jessica Kleinschmidt and that's at Kleinschmidt JD that's uh, at K L E I N is in November S C H M as in Mary I D as in David T as in Tom and the last two letters are J D Jack Daniels. <laughs> I'm sure that's not what it stands for. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's Jessica and probably her middle name, which she doesn't post on here, which is okay. Don't need it. But uh I'm just guessing that's what it is. And anyway, uh, she does content for NBC Sports. Uh, she lives in the Bay Area of California. And uh, she does a lot on the California teams. And like I said, uh, baseball and sports in general. Uh, anyway, those are all the people that 
I would recommend following if you're on Twitter. So anyway, let's get into this. Uh, I know I, uh, well, let me just copy something here. Uh, This was from a discussion I had with Gabriel when we were talking about the pay issue. She said, uh, many players make the minimum and have already agreed to massive pay cuts. It is the owners trying to renege on a deal, not the players. They did their part. And then she, uh, there was a discussion and she came back. Uh, again, this is Gabriel at GF Star with two R's, one. Not to mention players already agreed to massive cuts. And many of them don't even make more than the league, major league minimum before pay cuts. Owners trying to change the deal now because they're stingy is unfair, bad business practice, and a bad look. Well, I don't pretend to be a financial expert, but uh, I am a realist. And... She and a lot of the, a lot of the uh, people I mentioned, not all of them, but probably close to all of them, maybe all of them, uh, they think this is all on the owners. They think the uh, owners are greedy and, uh, well, you get the gist of what, she's, what uh, Gabrielle said. And uh, don't get me wrong, I really do respect and admire Gabrielle and all the other people that I mentioned on here earlier and uh, you know they have some valid points I will give them that but what I disagree with is they think I might be putting words in their mouth or putting thoughts in their heads but they think the owners should pay the players out of their personal funds. And that's not how any of this works. You see, when an owner buys a team, the owner expects to turn a profit from that team. The owner will buy the team using his or her, I don't think there's any women owners, but there might be. I mean, I think Gene Yockey way back with the Red Sox was the owner. Uh, her and her uh, husband, I think it was, I'm not sure. But anyway, that's not what I'm here for. Uh, owners buy the team with their own funds. And the reason they buy these teams is, well, obviously, number one, they love the game. And number two, to turn a profit. That's the purpose of all business ventures. Uh, people don't open businesses to be charities, to lose money. And that includes major league sports. Now, in a normal year when fans would be in the stands, the games would be, we'd be getting close to the halfway point of the season by now, another month. A normal year, you know, you'd have all the revenue coming in from the fans in attendance, from the TV revenues, the advertisement revenues, and, you know, whatever normal, you know, contracts and stuff they have with, you know, Nike and whatever else they get. So, I mean, that's mostly the players that get those endorsements. But, uh, but anyway, they'd have, you know, merchandise you know, at the games and, you know, people buying merchandise because they like whatever team, like my hat. Um, so, yeah, they would, most teams 
would be making a profit. So that's what they that's what they're in it for is to make a profit. And uh, when you have a team that doesn't turn a profit, that's when owners start thinking about selling teams. And that's when you have teams that uh, sometimes leave the cities and places where they are. The uh, Tampa Bay Rays is a good example of that. I think they have like maybe three or four years left on their uh, current contract at the TROP. And after that, they have this weird plan to split the season between Tampa and Montreal, which still don't know how that's going to work, but that's going to tick off a lot of fans here in Florida. And uh, it's not like Tampa Bay Ray games are selling out now, which is part of the reason they're in this mess. I gotta let my dog in just a minute here. Okay, I'm back. Didn't want my dog to be out too long with this heat. But anyway, getting back to this. The uh, Tampa Bay Rays are probably not going to be around too much longer because, well, they got a team like Tampa Bay has a couple things working against them. We're a very transient area, Florida being a very transient state, meaning that, uh, well, there are a lot of natives here, obviously. There's also a lot of transplants like myself coming down from Maine. I uh, support Tampa Bay, but my heart is with the Red Sox, and I'll always be a Red Sox fan. And uh, so there's that. You've got the uh, Yankees spring training facility in Tampa. And normally, in a normal year, they'd be uh, minor league. I think there would be minor league games played that, down there that, uh, during the summer. They'd have to look that up and make sure. But, um, yeah, and then uh, the stadium itself, number one, isn't that great. I mean, it's air conditioned, it's under a roof, it's, it's you know, comfortable, but it's really a pain in the butt to get to. It's in uh, St. Petersburg, which is, from down here, it's probably easier to go down, go over the Sunshine Skyway Bridge, or uh, you gotta go over the bridge in Tampa, I'm not sure what that one's called, but uh, it's a real, especially, uh, you know, during beach season, and, you know, games in April, Mayish when snowbirds and college spring breakers are here. It's a real pain in the neck to get to. And uh, so it's not very good planning. They wanted to build another stadium down. I think it was in Ybor City area they wanted to build it, which would have been perfect. Would have been absolutely perfect spot for it. You know, easy to get to, right in the heart of Tampa. You know, it's uh, you couldn't ask for a better place. But they wanted the taxpayers to pay for it, and uh, I don't blame them. Taxpayers didn't want to pay for it. So because I mean, there is no guarantee that if they did build a new stadium, they'd be selling out all the time. I mean. I'd like to think it would, I mean, the, uh, the Lightning hockey team, they do great down here. They have a, they have a huge following. The uh, Buccaneers, 
they had a they have a decent following a lot bigger now that tom brady's uh in uh gronk is here uh let's hope he can get some football this year because uh I got some season tickets. Had them last year, but this year we got Brady and Gronk down here. So uh, I want to go to some games, man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, football and hockey, they, they've made it here. But uh, for some reason, the, the Rays just haven't had the same success. And they've had some pretty good teams. I mean, they've They've been in the playoffs. They've, uh, I think they've won one World Series. Uh, you know, so it's, you know, it's not that the team is bad. It's just, I think it's the factors that I just mentioned that. It's, uh, you know, the location of the field. The, uh, and, uh, the fact that it's a transient state and they're fighting with the Yankees for the with the spring training facility because the Yankees spring training facility is easier to get to obviously whatever games they play is a lot more cheaper although I will say that the Tampa Bay Rays games are uh, a lot cheaper than uh, a lot of places a lot cheaper than Boston for sure so, uh, I mean, it's, I don't think it's a cost factor, like any, uh, at all. So, uh, anyway, I didn't mean to get off on a tangent on that, but uh, it is uh, part of the story. That basically, the bottom line is when teams start to lose money, they're not going to be around long. And if you're an owner... You're not going to keep the team if you're not making money. So now incorporate that into this year where we have this virus thing going around and all the games since, well, since spring training to up until now have been canceled. And uh, they're not even talking about starting regular season until around July 4th, July 1st time frame. So that's going to be uh, that's going to be uh, less than half the season. I guess they plan on playing 81 games, but uh, I don't know. That's uh, and so what the owners are saying is, look we're not going to have the revenue, and even when we have games, there's going to be no fans in the stands, so we're not going to be making any revenue other than TV contracts and uh, merchandise, at least until they're allow they allow fans in the stands. So, you know, the owners are saying to the players, "Look, man, you gotta, you know, you gotta." agree to take at least this year a cut and pay and you know that's that's the way it goes i mean these people that these people that saying all oh, the older owners are greedy and all that and they should pay these people and all that well the owners don't pay their players out of their own personal finances like I said they pay them out of the money the team makes and uh, it doesn't matter that they're billionaires because they are it doesn't doesn't matter it doesn't matter if they're billionaires or millionaires if uh, they're not gonna pay the players out of their personal finances and they shouldn't so, yeah, I realize they got contracts, but the contract is for playing games, and you're not playing games. You're sitting at home doing whatever you're doing. So, the owners are rightly saying, look, you know, we can't, we're not making any money, so we can't.
pay you, you know, pay you for half the year that you play, and uh, players are saying no. And I realize not all players are making tens of millions of dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars. I think for MLB, uh, I think the league minimum, well, let me not think, let me look it up. I want to say it's around, uh, I want to say it's around 500,000. Yes, 563,500 is the major league minimum. So, uh, I know when you're talking about cutting 50% of that, you're talking about around $250,000 that they would be getting paid. Now, I'm sorry, but get paid $250,000 for being a bench warmer on a major league team? How can you complain about that? I mean, I wish somebody would pay me $250,000 to sit on a bench and go in on a few games. <laughs> you know, it's a no-brainer. I mean, and uh, the minor leagues thing, that's a whole different story. That's a different story altogether. But, again, it's part of it discussion uh, so here's my thing if the star players that are making hundreds of millions tens of millions of dollars if they're so concerned about the people making late league minimum only getting two hundred and fifty thousand dollars why don't they all pitch in some of their uh, millions of dollars and uh, help their uh, fellow players out if they need it. Hmm? Why should it be on the owners? I mean, these. this is not a normal season. This is not a normal owners versus players thing. This is a pandemic where there's gonna be no fans which means no revenue, which means nothing to pay the players with. But they're going to make money still if they play the games. They're going to make money on the TV and, you know, whatever else, uh, you know, merchandise, which, you know, they sell merchandise year-round anyway, so they still get money for that. So... At least they'll be bringing in some money to be able to pay them their half the salary. Then next year, hopefully, things will be back to normal. Fans will be in the stands, and then they'll get their uh, regular contract. And, uh, you know, maybe the owners could, you know, say, okay, you know, we'll pay you whatever, or we'll at least pay... You know, the players that are making from 560000 up to a million dollars, we'll, we'll pay them up to a million dollars, you know, and uh, we'll pay them their full salary, and, uh, you know, that's, you know, that's cool, you know, but they don't have to, and they shouldn't have to, I mean, but they could. And that's the part where I say that some of it is on the owners because I don't think there's one owner of a baseball team that couldn't afford to at least do that. But then you've got these players that are talking, oh, my life is in danger if I go and play and blah, blah, blah. Well, first of all, they're going to be quarantined. There's going to be no fans in the stands. And uh, I know there's you know, coaches, managers, and, you know, that are elderly, and, you know, there's some players that have uh, pre-existing conditions and all that, and, 
So yeah, they, you know, they are a little bit, could be more susceptible, but again, they're being, they're being, they're not going to be around the general public because no fans are going to be at the games. And saying that they want the full salary or they're not going to play, how is uh, getting your full salary going to stop them from uh, getting the virus? Huh? So it really is about money. And, uh, you know, I don't blame them. I mean, they made their contract in good faith and they want their money, but the fact is they're not playing games. So, it's got to be a little give and take on both sides. I'm not saying the uh, players are 100% at fault, but the uh, owners are not at fault. Uh, you know, maybe 20, 10 to 20% because they could, you know, pitch in more than they're doing. And, uh, you know, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. You know, the owners could step up to the plate and do more, but uh, you can't just blame the owners without blame, blaming the players. And, uh, then there's a situation with minor league baseball, and these guys are the ones that are really hurt because they don't make millions of dollars. They they just uh, they don't even make a lot of them don't even make the major league minimum. Let me just check. Uh, I know it's a lot. I mean. I want to say it's, uh, the money is critical for minor leaguers who are not paid during the off season. The current minimum minor league salaries range from $290 per week in rookie leagues, where the season lasts three months, to $500 a week in AAA, where the season lasts five months. So, two hundred ninety dollars a week, and even five hundred dollars a week isn't that much, especially when you consider that they don't get paid during the off season. So a lot of these guys, they're when it's not baseball season, they're they got to work a regular job, and. Uh, as much as I say it's not the owner's responsibility to pay minor league or the major leaguers anyway, unless you're a really bad team and don't have any revenue coming in, you should be able to pay the minor leaguers. This is one thing after reading that. I didn't know it was that low. I knew it was low, but. I didn't know it was that low, plus they don't get paid during the off season. But uh, I'll give them that one. Minor leaguers should be played, they should be helped out. And uh, teams need to step up. The owners need to step up. They can, uh, they can pay the minor leaguers for five months. And if they can't, they don't belong owning a team. So, see, we've already found compromise. That's something we can agree with, with uh, the uh, ladies that I mentioned. But uh, either way, players, owners for the Major League Baseball, they're all looking really bad. And the players are going to get the brunt of it. It's just the way it is because they're the ones that look bad not wanting to accept a uh, half pay for half season when most people out there are making 10 to 15 dollars an hour wouldn't get 
paid at all if they didn't work, if they only worked half a season or half a year. You know, they got to be realistic. But I will, like I said, I'll, uh, I will give them the minor leaguers. They need to be paid. They need to be paid their salary for the full five months. And uh, it's got to happen. And, uh, you know, then there's the concession workers and, you know, all this other stuff. And, well, most of them during the off season, they, they need, they need, they find other jobs and whatever. I'm not sure we need to pay all of them. I, I applaud the teams that are. There's some teams that are, and I applaud them. It's great. But I don't think it's a requirement, and I don't think teams are scumbags just because they don't. But uh, minor leaguers, they need to be paid. And uh, I think that's all I have for today. Uh, hope you like this format. Something a little different. Won't be, uh, won't have a that much of a shaky camera like I do when I'm walking. So maybe this is a format I'll do more often. So uh, anyway, have a good day, and uh, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you want, or dislike if you want. I don't care. You can, uh, you can tell me I'm a jerk. You can tell me, believe me, I've heard it all before. And most of it's true. <laughs> I can be, but uh, I try not to be. But sometimes it's hard. Anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, love you all, and God bless you, and see you in the next one. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.